Car YouTube, Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video today. And today I'm going to show you my ultra cheap, well it's not that cheap, but still, compared to what it should cost, 12 core Xeon workstation running on the X99 platform. Now, I've been making these videos for a few years now and the one thing that's always been holding me back is just rendering time. It's not even just the rendering time, it's the fact that you can't use your computer while it's rendering, so it sort of disables me, you know, I want to render a load of videos, upload them, put all the descriptions in, and you just it's just taking so long, it's taking whole Saturdays and Sundays away from me. And I probably still will take whole Saturdays and Sundays away from me, but I'm gonna be able to make a lot more videos and it won't stress me out so much. So I thought for a while I need more power, you know, the 880K, it's alright for a little bit of casual 1080p rendering, but it still takes forever. So I was looking at maybe an i5, most likely an i7 for hyper-threading, then I thought maybe wait till Zen comes out, and then still, you know, they're more gaming processes, they're good at video editing, they're still very good at these productive stuff, but they're more, you know, four cores, high clock, that's what you want to, it's better for gaming than it is video editing. So I thought I need a Xeon, um, but I can't afford a Xeon. Then I seen, which I mentioned in the motherboard video, I've seen loads of people are making all these videos about the E5 2670. I think it's based on Sandy Bridge, is it? Um, Sandy Bridge E, and it's an 8 core Xeon, and it's really good for video editing. And it's £70, and you should go out and buy one, but then you have to go and get the motherboard, which is an X79. So then it's like a four year old motherboard as well, and then all the good condition ones are over £200. Anything under it's like broken pins, and then you don't even know if the good one's going to work. Then you need again the RAM as well. You might have some lying about, but still 32 gig of RAM, so it's 400 quid. And I thought, well, there's got to be a different way around this. You know, what's the newer platform, X99? What Xeons can you put in it? I had a look, and then I came across the E5 2670v3, which is a 12 core um, Xeon. Um, with a massive like 30 megabytes of cache but the problem was it's an engineering sample so I did take a slight risk you're not really supposed to buy them Intel give them to you and then it's yours to keep you're not supposed to give them to anyone but hey ho someone was selling it I bought it um, and that's what's helped me build this whole system for like under 725 pounds now I will warn you I'm not doing any benchmarks in this video today I've uploaded a few videos um, and there will be some going up as well there'll be a load of gaming ones even though I didn't buy this for gaming um, even my 880K keeps up with it gaming, to be fair, because it's four cores, high clocks, it's what it wants. But um, yeah, for video editing, it's been absolutely brilliant. This thing's rendering 4K quicker than the 880K renders 1080p, and that's with everything turned on to the max, you know, maximum depth, maximum rendering, and then it's still only using like 60, 70% CPU, so I can still crack on, you know, upload these videos, do these comments. So that's why I've really, you know, absolutely, it's been a must for me. Um, so yeah, just under £725 spent, which I'll go through in a minute, and I do plan to spend some more as well. I don't think much more than 500 more on it over the next few months, but still, I think I'll have terrific value. And again, with the X99 motherboard platform, you know, in a couple of years when the real, you know, the proper retail Xeons are cheap, I can get those. I was also looking at maybe testing out an i7-6900K that comes out, because that's eight cores with high clocks, so it'll probably keep up with this video editing. Um, so yeah, let me tell you about how I got this so cheap. So I am apologise, I'm reading these off post-it notes because it's been a long day. This thing's really stressed me out, this case. I had it all in here, it looked beautiful. And if you go watch the video, trust me, I hate this case. It's got to go, you've got to go. And um, so yeah, start off with like motherboard, case, not even, well, motherboard, yeah, motherboard, graphics, RAM. Yeah, I think that's about where we should start. So, sorry. So the motherboard um, is an MSI X99 uh, SLI Plus. Took a slight risk on that because I bought it refurbished, not refurbished, um, you know, sort of open box um, for a hundred pounds. Didn't come with a rear eye shield. Not that you can actually see it with everything in here. You don't notice it's not there, but um, MSI kindly are sending me one out. So thanks for that, MSI. I've still got warranty with it as well. Um, so a hundred pound, absolute bargain. Um, the processor again was another, well they're all bargains. Um, was an E5 267V3. The standard clock is 2.3. Mine only runs at 2.2 gigahertz and then mainly hovers around 2.6, all cores turbo. Don't get much higher than that. Maybe the first one to four cores sometimes hit three gigahertz, but that's very rarely, but still massive performance and that cost me 180 pounds. And then the RAM, which is 32 gigabytes of Corsair 
um, DDR4 Vengeance LPX. Um, it's rated to 2,666 megahertz, but I'm only running at 2,133 because that's the max the Xeon will support. Um, and I do plan to upgrade that to 64 gig, not that I need it, just because I can. Um, um, but the 32 gig was 120 quid, so that's 400 quid. That was about the same I would have spent on the X79 setup to get good quality parts or parts that I bought with good quality. So I think I've got an absolute bargain there as well. Um, and um, what else as well? I've got the graphics card as well. Again, EVGA um, GTX 960 Super Super Clock. I bought that for £100 second hand. Now, as for graphics cards upgrades, I'm still a bit undecided. I would really like to put a 1070 in there. But then I think it's wasted because I'm not using it for gaming performance. I'm only going to be more using it for the CUDA. Um, so then I am looking at other second-hand graphics cards. I've seen like a 780 go in for like 140 quid on eBay the other day. So I'm more thinking how much is the 970 going to be in six months on eBay. And then I'll probably put that in there, which will give me a nice CUDA boost. Um, next down to storage. Again, I've done very well on the storage. I've got an OCZ Trion um, 240 gigabyte, which I'm using for my system drive, um, which is fine. But I do plan to upgrade that to an M.2 SSD in the next month or so. And then I'm going to get another Trion SSD. Um, and then I'm just going to use that as like a strict array zero. I know there's not really any redundancy there, but it'll give me nice speed and um, be a really good scratch disk as well. Because I reckon it should be able to hit maybe eight, 900 megabytes a second read off you know, 400, 400, 500 gig of storage, that would be very good. And that hard drive was £40 on a Black Friday special. Um, the other hard drive you can see here as well is a 500 gigabyte uh, Samsung drive I pulled out of someone's broken laptop, but it actually had Windows 7 on it, which I then stripped everything off, managed to clean up the hard drive, and then I upgraded it to Windows 10, and that's what we're using in here. Not exactly official, but you know what, Microsoft, what I don't care. Um, and then the other hard drive as well that I'm using for a scratch disk at the moment is a Western Digital Black 1 terabyte, which I won for 20 quid on eBay. So yeah, in storage, I spent 60 quid and it's all running really nice. And um, Adobe Premiere runs a lot better when you're not doing it off your system drive. Off the scratch disk, it runs quite dramatically quicker. Um, so now let me have a little look at this because this is the one I can't really remember. Cases, cooling and power supplies. So the case is an NZXT Source S340. It wasn't originally the case that I was going to go for. There's a few cases coming out, but do you know what? I think I'm probably going to leave it in here. That was £55 with delivery. Um, all this stuff was free delivery. I don't like to pay postage. Um, and then for the cooling, I've got three Fractal Design um, Silent R3 fans. They're free pin. They're not PD PWM, but I've got them running full whack. You can barely hear them. They're shifting loads of air. They were £7 each, so that was £21. Um, and then for my cooler, mm, I took quite a big risk on that. Um, Corsair H55 refurbished, refurbished water cooler. Temporary solution because the water cooler that I want isn't out yet. Um, so that I've seen the other day at Compu on the Computex site. So that's the cooler that I want. Um, but then I've got that £35 and then I'm using the Thermal Grizzly Paste, which was six quid, the Cryonaut one, which keeps it nice and cool. Generally about 40, 45 at idle though, because it is quite a big chip and I'm not using that big a heat sink, but it never goes over 60 degrees when running at load. And then for the fan on it as well, I took the original one off and I've got the NZXT one off my case. Um, haven't tested it with the other one, but it's just because I like the way it looks. <laughs> so that's where I've got that. And then what else is there? Oh, the power supply um, is that's been going for a good year now. Um, so if anyone thought that they weren't very good because they were cheap, they are. They have worked all right. And that is a thermal take uh, Smart SE 530 watt semi-modular power supply with all flat black cables, um, £45 bargain. That's also being replaced soon though because I broke one of these PCI cables trying to do a braiding job. That's why I'm never doing braiding again. Um, so I've got to probably get another one. Maybe when I up graphics card, I'll have to up power supply as well. All in all, that cost me £722. And this thing is a beast. Like I love it. It's saving me so much time. It's just any anything I throw at it, it just eats. Obviously not gaming. It's not the best gaming, but it's still good at gaming. Um, it's not going to ever be the best gaming rig, but then it will still be, you know, as good as a, like a low level i5 but then when it comes to video editing it's 
phenomenal really it's absolutely this thing tears through the sign bench benchmark go have a look um, over on my channel so sorry I'm not showing any benchmarks today I just wanted to just show you all how you can build you know if you're a content creator and you're on a budget how you can build an absolutely amazing system and one that would probably last you a bit longer than this whole let's get the older version of the 2670 and you know a hatchet x79 motherboard spend 700 quid and it could all blow up in a month because i've already seen people posting videos of their builds blowing up so there's a warning anyway if you like these videos um sorry it's just me chatting today well it's always just me chatting but not showing loads of stuff or showing a really in-depth review on each part but um if you like it please go over to the channel please subscribe thanks for watching